Hello. Welcome again to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel. Our program comes to you from the campus of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center and is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, which is uh, a joint venture of the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. Uh, our case today is a uh, rather unique case. Uh, I have not previously seen this disorder in this location. Uh, so it's one of those uh, maybe not so uncommon things that is occurring in a uh, uncommon location. It's a 68-year-old woman who uh, goes for a screening endoscopy and is found to have a raised uh, rectal lesion, uh, somewhat mass-like. Um, and uh, the endoscopist takes a photograph uh, using the re retroflexion of the uh, endoscope. And you can see that it has a slightly rolled border, maybe a little bit of central depression um, and variable nodularity to it. It looks different than the surrounding uh, rectal mucosa. So um, after a biopsy is obtained, they come back and provide us with an endoscopic mucosal resection um, from which uh, my slides here are taken. As you can see, we've got several centimeters <clears throat> of uh, colorectal mucosa. And here we can see maybe this rolled raised edge and a central uh, depressed area uh, here in some of the sections. So as we uh, hone in on this area, <clears throat> we can see that uh, on the edges uh, here, we have uh, normal colonic mucosa uh, with uh, some degree of vascular congestion. And then we have a little bit of a gland forming uh, lesion here extending into the um, uh, submucosa slightly uh, down here. Um, and then if you've uh, picked up closely, you've noticed that the surface epithelium here uh, to the right is different from our normal goblet cell rich uh, type of mucosa on the left. So we'll look at this a little bit more uh, carefully. Uh, and you can see that uh, <clears throat> we lose the goblet cells and we have more of a uh, foveolar pattern epithelium here comparing these glands to these. Uh, this looks much more like a foveolar type of epithelium. Um, <clears throat> looking around a little further, we see that uh, these are not normal crypts. Uh, they're, they look more like uh, antral type gastric glands uh, or crypts. Uh, looking a little further here again, we see this loss of uh, normal colon uh, colonic cells here uh, with this more deep uh, antral type tissue. Um, we'll go to another area here, and uh, as we look a little bit more fully at this, we can see here's more of these uh, antral type glands uh, here and here, um, and let's go back out here a little bit and find the other area of interest. Um, I believe it's down here. And in fact, as we uh, look around on this, here we, here we can see, uh, not really well demonstrated because of the cautery artifact, but these are in fact uh, uh, gastric body type glands, uh, parietal cells and chief cells. They don't uh, light up particularly well here, but uh, this is uh, obviously quite different from the normal uh, colorectal mucosa. Uh, additional sections uh, also with some cautery artifact showed this uh, uh, quite clearly. So uh, this is an example then of uh, ectopic uh, gastric type mucosa occurring in the colon. Uh, so uh, I had not previously seen this uh, in the colon, although we see it fairly frequently in other sites. For example, uh, duodenal biopsies, we probably see uh, heterotopic gastric, mu gastric mucosa several times a year. Uh, in the jejunum, a Meckel's diverticulum can have ectopic gastric mucosa uh, and that's picked up, you know, maybe once or twice a year in our surgical practice. Uh, likewise, in the esophagus, so you can see the inlet patch in the upper esophagus that is uh, fairly common um, in individuals and oftentimes is not even biopsied because it's so uh, frequently seen. Uh, these have been reported in other GI sites as well as some soft tissue sites as well uh, as pure heterotopic uh, type epithelium. Uh, I'm thinking of a, a report of uh, such tissue in the scrotum um, and other soft tissue sites as well. 
Well, this is obviously not a significant therapeutic problem, uh, but there are some risks associated with gastric heterotopia, uh, particularly in the jejunum and potentially here in the colon. Uh, you can get ulceration, potentially bleeding, and po even perforation, depending on the depth of the ulceration. If there's significant peptic, acid, peptic secretions uh, that are going to result in uh, um, ulceration. Uh, rarely, you can develop malignancy or dysplasia in one of these lesions. We're obviously aware uh, that uh, intestinal metaplasia and, and so forth can do that in the, uh, in the uh, uh, esophagus and so forth, but uh, other sites can occasionally uh, develop uh, secondary malignancies. Infection with H. pylori, probably not too much of a problem, uh, but obviously would then be potentially related to malignancy. Perhaps the greatest uh, danger is that uh, it's uh, misdiagnosed as a floater or a contaminant, um, and uh, we don't recognize that this is, in fact, a part of the normal uh, variants that can be seen um, and can account for abnormalities either of mass lesion or ulcer or other problems. Um, in that regard, uh, of course, you want to make sure that uh, you uh, ideally you, you see uh, the continuity between uh, the normal tissue of the site uh, and the ectopic uh, uh, gastric mucosa, as we see in our uh, sample with the colonic mucosa at the margins. So with that, our final, final sign-out diagnosis is gastric heterotopia occurring in the rectum, um, and uh, no further uh, management would be needed in this particular case. Uh, we thank you for joining us and hope that you found that uh, little uh, uh, vignette uh, useful and uh, intriguing. Uh, please uh, don't uh, hesitate to uh, share your comments. Uh, also, we hope that you'll like, uh, hit that like button because that uh, certainly does affect our channel's uh, ability to reach the audience that we'd like. And most importantly, please, uh, please subscribe uh, so that uh, we have a chance to see more of you on our channel. And as a uh, little bonus, if you can uh, correctly identify in the comments the uh, nature of the lesion behind me, uh, you'll get uh, a gold star for the day. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, uh, I hope that your diagnoses are always accurate and that you continue to enjoy uh, surgical pathology. So until next time, thanks for joining me.